All right, so we have some off-season qualifiers going on, right? Qualifying for some of the the big name events, online competitions, maybe doing them a few times, uh, doing the workouts a few times. That is um, potentially in the middle of a, a, a training block intended to uh, improve strength or improve conditioning. Um, sometimes these these off off season uh, events create a little bit of stress since athletes feel like they aren't necessarily where they want to be. You know, they're they're seeing their their scores on the leaderboard and they're a little unhappy with it. Uh, this is something that that is is challenging for coaches. This is something that's challenging for athletes as well. And John, I know that you have some personal experience working with this. I know I've worked with some athletes that uh, have some challenges with these with these off season qualifying events. What's the what's the situation? What is what is your current take on how uh, how athletes should approach these off season events and how coaches should help facilitate these uh these off season events not you know creating stress and consternation i mean there's always going to be stress um qualifiers are always stressful um you're trying to you're trying to fit in workouts um when not everyone else is doing competitive workouts you're you know you you have a window to get workouts done in you don't know what everyone else's scores are Um, it's, it's always going to be stressful. Um, but I think one of the things that I'm seeing right now is, uh, it's Waterpalooza qualifying for teams right now. It was individuals a couple of weeks ago. Um, and it's at a time in the season for a lot of people where they're not necessarily ready to compete. Um, they haven't necessarily been training to compete. Um, so coming out of the game season, um, for those athletes that were either at semifinals or at the games, um, they're more than likely in a phase of their training where they're working on weaknesses, they're working on specific things that came up in the season where they struggled. Um, and it's hard to improve those while maintaining a performance level of fitness um, and a competition level of fitness. Um so I think some people, they do see something like a Waterpalooza as their goal for the year. Um, maybe an athlete who knows they're not quite at the level of semifinals yet, or they're not going to bridge that gap between semifinals and the games yet. Um, they might see Waterpalooza as this is my competition for the year. This is what I want to train for. Um, and they can build their training around the qualifiers and then the competition in Miami. Um but for athletes whose focus is on the game season, Waterpalooza is just a difficult competition because the qualifiers are right in the middle of what I would consider the off season. Um, and then the competition is right at the beginning of the game season. Um, now, I think it's different now that the open matters less in terms of qualifying. You know, when it used to be, you had to be top 40 or top 60 in your region to get to regionals, um, the open mattered and you had to do well. Now that it's the top 10% or is it 10%? Yeah. Top 10% that go to quarterfinals and you have this huge window of athletes, um, the open doesn't matter. So previously peaking for Waterpalooza was okay because you roll from Waterpalooza right into the open and you just kind of maintain that level of fitness. Um, but now that the open is less important and it's not really till late March where you need to be kind of on your game. And for some athletes, it's not until semifinals, you know, there was back when it was regionals, there was a few athletes who didn't have to worry about regionals, but that, but most people had to be peaking for regionals. Um, some people didn't have to worry about the open as much and they could just focus on regionals. Now there's a lot of people that don't have to focus on the open and don't have to focus on quarterfinals. Because if, if you're in North America and it's like, okay, you need to finish top 120 as an individual in quarterfinals. It's like, okay, you're pretty, pretty secure there. It's not until semifinals where you really have to be on your A game. Um, so with Waterpalooza being in, in January, you're kind of are you peaking in January and then dropping back down and then re-peaking for semifinals? Are you trying to maintain that kind of performance level from Waterpalooza all the way through the season from then on? It gets a little more tricky. Um, 
I know a number of people I work with use Waterpalooza as just kind of a getting competitive experience, getting on the competition floor, um, as opposed to we're trying to win this. And not to say they're not trying hard when they're doing it, but um, we're not preparing them in a way that is focused on Waterpalooza. We're preparing them for the game season, and Waterpalooza is a stepping stone in that in that process. Um, but yeah, I think I think the qualifiers come at a tricky time, and there's a debate on should you aim to be in competitive shape for qualifiers, or should you just do them as part of your training wherever you're at? And if you qualify, great. If you don't, it's fine. What's your opinion there? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I I, I think that one of the things that is tricky with this stuff, and we we talk about this tension on a lot of the podcasts, is how much actual sport practice you need to be doing and how much of that is beneficial and how much you need to step away from the actual sport in order to get better. And I don't, there's not, there's not clear answers to that. Right. But you could make the argument like, oh yeah, well you could just use the Wadapalooza qualifiers as your sort of like sport practice, which you should always be doing. You know, maybe you have a brief actual off season, but I think that you know, we've we've all talked about on the podcast just mistakes we've made in the past about stepping too far away from the sport and being like, cool, yeah, we're just gonna like only do band pull aparts and like rowing intervals, and that's gonna turn you into, you know, this like aerobic monster with like great shoulder endurance. And then that just doesn't work, right? You're like, oh no, like my plan <laughs> my plan failed. Um so I I definitely see the the argument of like, hey, listen, like keep a lot of sports specific training year round and use the other time to work on other things that need to be worked on. Um, like I see that as a pretty strong argument and I see using qualifiers as part of that as like a pretty reasonable training strategy, right? Like that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, but kind of like you're saying, you know, the, like everything that goes into being peaked though, is not just like practicing your sport regularly, right? Like there's a lot of um, there's a lot of other aspects that go into it, including, you know, the, the training throughout the rest of the week. Uh, how much is that set up to set you up for success specifically on those qualifier days and specifically for those qualifier workouts? Cause if you want to be, you know, ready to really nail those things that impacts what you're doing the rest of the week, right? Like you have to be careful with the volume you're doing of certain things. You have to have a certain, um, like intensity about how you approach those qualifiers, which can impact the training, that follows after them. So I think that that's where the, that, that to me seems more like where the trade-off comes in. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think you kind of get a free shot sometimes with qualifiers um, where you can, you can do the workouts and it's like, if, if you don't stack up well, it's like, okay, we weren't preparing for these. We're not, you're not in shape for these. That's okay. But if you do well on them, it's like, great, you're stacking up really well. And we haven't been focusing on this. Like you're in good shape. We just need Very to keep on yeah very manipulative yeah you got you know it's true though (laughs) pre-wired yeah like i had i had an athlete who finished fourth in individual qualifier for waterpalooza in the in the team division um and you know we we haven't been focusing on that stuff in in her off season she's been working on her gymnastics and her aerobic capacity but she's not been doing a ton of of out and out metcons and the kind of intensity levels that she needs to for competition and for her to walk through what was not exactly a favorable lineup of workouts for her and finish fourth in the qualifiers. Like, okay, that's a great sign. Like we can still keep doing what we're doing. We'll do a little bit more focus prep closer into Wadapalooza, but um, we're using that as a stepping stone for the game season next year and qualifying for the games. So we're not going to change all of her training just so she can do well at Waterpalooza. We're going to keep doing what we're doing and keep that focus on the games. And if, if it works out for her, then great. So what's the, what's the training focus during the qualifiers? Does that make sense? Like, what are you focusing on in addition? Um, I mean, for her specifically, it was, we're still working on gymnastics. We're still working on some top end strength stuff. Um, She's a teen athlete who's moving up an age division. So she's going from the 14, 15 to the 16, 17. 
Um, and she's going from being one of the strongest in her division to being strong, but more towards the kind of middle of the pack on strength um, by aging up. So we're trying to maximize her, her strength side of things, improve her gymnastics strength and her gymnastics endurance. Um, and we didn't change anything for the, for Waterpalooza. She, she hit the workout, she hit some other training. Um, and yeah, nothing really changed during the qualifiers. In the, in the kind of months before Waterpalooza, we'll definitely be doing some more competition style workouts and some intensity levels are a little bit higher. Um, probably drop out a little bit of the um, strength work or maybe the single focus work in her training and keep it a little more mixed. But, but yeah, nothing will change too much. Do, yeah, do you see for, for that athlete, like does doing the qualifiers, do you see that having a negative impact on the other <clears throat> or not really? Minimal. On the grand scheme, like grand scheme, no. Um, yeah, it affects a few days in that week. Um, and it's maybe, it was, it was kind of difficult because they had two weeks of qualifiers. Um, so they, they released some workouts week one and then they released workouts week two. <coughs> Excuse me. So it was kind of a little bit awkward. Um, it didn't flow quite as nicely as if it was just one week of qualifiers. Um, yeah. How, how many, how uh, many workouts per week was it? Uh, it was three, I believe. Yeah. I think one was going to be a, a two part, especially if you're doing any of them more than once. Yeah. But yeah, it was. But so let me see. So yeah, they had six scores. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, one of them was a two yeah. part. So like week three, week one had three workouts. Week two had yeah. three scores, but two workouts. Mm -hmm. Totally. So you um, didn't really see like a a significant impact on just the, the overall focuses of training from taking that time and doing those extra workouts. It was just like, fine, just part of it. No. Yeah, it didn't affect things too much. And definitely disrupted things. But when we look, again, big picture, it's not. It's just like a minor, minor blip. Yeah. And was it, I mean, it could also be disruptive in a good way too, because, you know, we, we've mentioned this a few times where these online qualifiers are, just so stressful, right? Like these things are yeah. are engineered in a way that is just like, how can we make you feel as bad as possible about your workout performance? Like, what yeah. if we set it up in a way where like, you know, there, there's like yeah. just the right amount of uncertainty, just the right amount of comparison to others, um, like to, to just make people feel fucking terrible, right? And so I think yeah. actually just practicing that at some level even though it sucks, is potentially helpful for athletes to get used to that, but can also be bad because it like really, you know, just like pokes at the 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 neurotic parts of of people's brains. Yeah. And that, there's actually one very positive thing to come out of it. There was a workout um in the qualifier that was toast bar and deadlifts, which um she did at home and she got like 330 on it. And I was like running the numbers and I was like, that seems kind of slow. Like she told me how she broke things up and it was like, I don't quite know what, how you went that slow. Um, and so she came into the gym to redo it and she got like a full minute faster. Um, and it was, I mean, it was for, a, she went basically from three thirty to two thirty on the workout. Um, and I think she got, she got at least top 10 on that workout. I forget what it was exactly. Um, but that was actually a very positive experience to for her to come in and essentially just go max effort for two and a half minutes and sprint and understand that she can move fast and she can cycle fast and she can hold on for bigger gymnastics. And it was that had a that was a positive workout and a positive effect from it. So um you can totally. like you can pull a lot of wins out of qualifiers in that sense. Yeah, and like a, a a one third performance improvement like that is crazy. Also, like, yeah, well, well done. Yeah. I mean, she did have to do it again uh, anyway because she didn't video it when she did it at home. Um, so I see. it was always going to be done again, but I knew there was a lot of time yeah. to gain there. Yeah, I think that the not 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 just like the intensity like that, but also just 
getting used to the, I mean, like the whole setup process, like videoing yeah. stuff, like all, like there's so much there that really messes with people. And if they only do it with actual stakes once a year and for them, it's like, okay, yeah. you know, the time that this matters is this time when I'm trying to qualify for quarterfinals or when I'm trying to qualify for semifinals or whatever. And I'm not used mm -hmm. to the whole rigmarole of videoing and actually being judged and looking at a leaderboard and feeling bad about myself. You know, it, it's maybe not something that you want to do once or twice a year if it's really important to you. It might be something that you want right. to do more than that to get used to it. Yeah, I think both the setup process and the stress of like, okay, we're you have to announce your name, we have to film all the weights and measurements, and we have to keep you in the camera angle, and we've got a coned off area around where you're working out so no one walks in front of the camera, you know, all of that kind of thing. Making that a regular occurrence and getting comfortable with it can take away some of the stress for when it actually matters. Right. Yeah, the... um. Uh... <laughs> But which one was it where they had to actually weigh their stuff recently and a bunch of people just like skip that part? Yeah. That's kind of sick. Though. It was, it was the Travis Mayer was talking about it because he messed up and didn't weigh something. Yeah, he didn't weigh his stuff. Yeah. I forget what which it? competition it was. So. Yeah, I don't remember. Is it, it is. But that kind of rules. I can't remember. Because people yeah. like definitely back in the day would, you know, use like fake wall balls. I think there yep. was some situation where someone was using fake plates or something, which is like, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, there was some good <laughs> cheats back in the day. I think, I think it, I'd think. i like to say it happens less now because I think people don't like getting found out in the live competition. Um, but I don't know, though. Like, they seem to be totally fine. Like, people were just totally down to be like, yeah, I'll just show up to regionals and just, you know, like, you could have replaced me with a random person from the stands and they would be doing better on this workout than me. Yeah. Like, which there is was, so awesome. There was a guy. Like, who, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> uh, you remember the guy in our region who is unnamed but used to like win the max lift event at regionals and then finish last in every other of event. Yeah. Of course. He was so well incredible. known for fudging open workout scores to to make it to regionals. Yeah. Uh anyway, <laughs> the the tangent of like hilarious cheats uh well mm. funny and indulgent is maybe not actually that helpful <laughs> for like thinking about uh how to how to handle qualifiers right <laughs> i mean i think the guy that took the rope out of his jump rope is the best one so you can do definitely do that in qualifiers oh i don't know if i remember that yeah. one what was the deal with that there was it was a guy that i forget what competition it was maybe it was the open but he basically the it was put out that he didn't have a rope on his jump rope he just had handles um and cuz the video was not quite clear enough you couldn't you couldn't really tell if you if you knew to look for it you could tell yeah but it was like yeah he just didn't have a rope on there so he was just jumping and like you could see the timing was off between his hands and his jumps and it didn't matter cuz he was never going to trip up cuz there was nothing there that's amazing i'll have to look that, that a good one, one. Up. i love that one yeah i mean I still don't think anything can top that one Masters guy who just looped the same round over and over yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, was it thrust as double unders? Yeah, yeah, that was it. It was. And so if it good. wasn't fit, like it was a pretty good edit. Apart from he he re gripped on the bar, like g picking up the bar, he like picked it up and then re gripped, and then he used that round and yeah. just looped it, and every round was the same. Yeah. Yeah. No, but you could see it like because he he looped it when he was bending over to pick up the bar, and like if you yeah. watched his back, you could just see his back like do like a it was like you're like oh yeah. <laughs> good good job man. Well now having now having the enforcing like the the apps that have the clock on the screen or whatever um, limits the opportunity for for that kind of thing. You'd have to be pretty good at so video cool, editing though. to be able to edit the the clock at the same. Yeah, that's doable. But. Yeah, I just love it though. I just like, I just can't <laughs> like what what outcome like what do you think is going to happen? Like, what do you expect to happen? Yeah, when you show up to this competition, like, what are you thinking? 
But yeah. Um, it, it's it's like the uh, it's like the gamblers who are just like, yeah, I'll, I'll win it all back on the next one, right? I think there's like some sort of thing like that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but anyway, right? So to, <laughs> going back to um, going back to qualifier workouts, right? So I mean. We were just talking about the idea of actually practicing the skill of doing these online competitions, um, which is, I think, beneficial and a skill that people need to have. Uh, because if that's a priority for them, like we said, we don't want we don't want you to only do this once or twice a year when it actually matters. Uh, but I think the the downside, sort of like we were talking about, is not just the the training disruption, whatever, but the idea of being able to work on stuff uninterrupted for a while without having to rank yourself, I think is really important for development. I think that's kind of what you were getting at at the beginning, John, right? Is that sort of what the, yeah. the point you were making? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think for, for a lot of people, um, they need to have that set goal in mind of what is their goal for the season. Um, and then their training needs to be built around what that goal is and everything in between needs to accommodate for that goal. And if your goal is, I want to qualify for semifinals or I want to qualify for the games. It's like, okay, you need to build your training around that. And if you want to do this qualifier in October, great, but we're not, we're not prepping you for that. We're not building for that. You can do it. You qualify. Great. If not, it doesn't matter. Um, and that's really, I think having the overarching goal in mind is important. And then having a training plan built around that is important. Um, because for most people, for unless you're a top 10 athlete in the world, you don't need to be in performance shape year round. Um, like we talked about, you can't completely ignore certain things and you can't go so far one way where you're way out of competition shape. Um, but you can't be peaked year round because it's just not sustainable emotionally, physically. Like you can't handle that year round if you're having to work hard to stay at that level. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And the, the other trade off there though, is that the, um, having something on the calendar coming up, I think is actually very helpful for people, mm -hmm. right? There is, some percentage there are some percentage of people who can just like stay super super motivated and disciplined and working really really hard all year with like a long term goal in mind uh but i actually don't think that that's everyone right that people benefit from being like okay i'm going to try to do the wadapalooza qualifier which means i like actually need to keep my shit together for the few weeks or months leading into it like i need to actually right. be you know doing what I need to do with my nutrition. I need to be doing what I need to do with my sleep. Um, and also just like being focused in training. I think that that's a really challenging thing for a lot of athletes is, is staying actually focused on getting better day in and day out. Like people love going to the gym and they like working out, but they're not necessarily there with intention. Right. And so having mm -hmm. these, these more frequent, uh, I guess like challenges or tests or qualifiers or whatever is something which is like, yeah, okay. You know, like, I want to learn this, but I'm not going to learn it to the degree I would if I know I have an exam coming up on it. So like, if I have an exam, I'm going to study. I'm going to actually learn it. And if I have a qualifier, like, oh yeah, I'm going to like actually fucking figure out my pistols, right? I'm going to actually like right. learn to do these correctly because I know it's going to potentially show up as opposed to just like, oh yeah, like I should work on that, but uh, whatever. We'll figure it out before quarterfinals maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that kind of relation to like a, a school exam is, is exactly right. Um, there are some things where it's like, yeah, this is important to you. You need to prepare for it and study for it. There are others where it's like, okay, this is just a chance for you to see where you're at and see what you need to study more before the big test. Um, and qualifiers can be just like that. It can be a, well, let's do it. And if you qualify, great, but this isn't your goal and we're just going to see where you stack up. Yeah, I think having those conversations is important just to clarify like, hey, this is this is a tool, right? We can use these qualifiers as a tool in service of like the larger goal, right? Whether that larger goal is specifically qualifying for quarterfinals, semifinals, games, whatever, um, whether the larger goal is just like general improvement, um, you know, that the 
the, the, the nature of them, like we talked about, I think is challenging in a lot of ways, but it can be a pretty powerful tool if used correctly with like good communication and good understanding from the athlete about what's actually happening. Right. Yeah. Yep. But I guess also the, the, even with that communication, you know, the downsides that we talked about with like the um, comparison and distracting from training, you know, that can still, that can still pop up. So I don't know. How do you handle that? The comparison, <clears throat> sorry, the comparison between training and competition, you mean? Training no, just like the, um, no, because I, the, the thing that I think is really tough with the qualifiers that you were talking about earlier is you see, you see your name on a leaderboard ranked with other people. And that's something that usually makes people feel really, really bad and then make bad decisions. Right. Yeah. Like, in some cases, it's like, oh, this is like just the kick in the ass I needed to figure out that I do finally need to like learn to do pistols or whatever we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times it's like, oh, I don't think I'm where I need to be. Let me make bad decisions about what I should be doing instead of what I should actually be doing. Right. It's like, oh, I'm not yeah. like I'm not there. I just like need to do more. I need to like suddenly switch my training. I need to switch coaches. I need to um, like do the small off cycle. Right. Like people just make impulsive bad decisions based upon their ranking, like not like good thought out long term decisions. Right. And there's so many variables in a qualifier workout that comparing yourself to others is tough. Um, again, when, when you're off season, you don't know what other people are doing and what stage of their training they're at. And that can go both ways. Like if you beat someone who like was right around the same level as you last season, it doesn't necessarily mean you've jumped ahead of them and you're way better than them now. They could just have different training priorities and the, how much they focus on a qualifier event. Um, and at the same time, if, if someone's way better than you in a qualifier, it doesn't mean anything until it comes down to an actual live competition or, you know, a qualifier that matters more to you. Um, cause you, you never know where people are at in their, in their preparation stage. And whether they're using wall balls that actually have, uh, 20 or 14 pounds in them. Correct. Absolutely. Could be a, yeah. Yeah. Could be, uh, did, did you ever make one of those, those basketball wall balls back in the day? Like before you could just buy wall balls. No, that was slightly I did. pre my time. <laughs> I made one. It went it went very badly. Like because mm. you just took mm. a basketball and like cut it open and filled it with sand and then like duct taped it. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, cool. This is great. And then um I would actually bring it to Bally's, now LA Fitness with me. But if mm. I if I dropped it, <laughs> like even though it was like all duct tape, all this sand, like this like cloud of sand would just like poof out of it. I was like, I don't think I should be doing this in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it didn't turn out very well. Um yeah, I don't even like it when our sandbags at the gym like have a little puff of sand when they get dropped. So oh, yeah. I can't yeah. imagine that would go down well in a regular Yeah, gym. it was it was it was much worse than like the sandbag like puff of sand and dust. Like it was like, I mean, this yeah. is probably user error. Like someone else probably made this that worked very, very well, but it was like, Oh yeah. shit. Like if I, if I miss this or like, I'm not paying attention and just drop it cause I'm tired or whatever. It was like, Oh, I actually just made a huge mess. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, qualifiers yeah. to sum it up. Um, so lo love them or hate them. Uh, they're, they're a tool that can be used in training uh but it has to be used with care right because it can cause stress for athletes it can distract from training but it is an opportunity to practice competing and it is an opportunity to get sport specific practice even during like a more off-season style of training and you know again like sort of like we were saying for the best like it just is fine and it goes well um for other folks you maybe need to need to be a little bit more deliberate about it but you know some of the communication stuff you're just talking about john i think is really important for um, yeah, making sure that athletes are set up to understand the point of a qualifier and where they sit in it and to not let it distract from like what they're actually trying to 